think we're still going live. I am live now. So I'm live on uh, on Facebook and I'm live on um, YouTube. Yeah. It's worrying when you can't even remember what media platform you're on. Been spending quite a lot of time thinking about this sort of time of year last year. This was our last Sunday in church. Um, on the, uh, it just before that first lockdown. So this, although it wasn't the date, this this kind of Sunday within the church this year was our last Sunday uh, worshiping together. I think our first Sunday not was Mothering Sunday, which comes next week. So um, yeah, it's kind of a full circle. But spring is in the air. Certainly is today if you're in Taunton. It's uh, it's a bright blue sky. I'm just gonna. It's I know I know when the weather is good because I actually have to shut the curtains so that we can uh, vaguely uh, have some kind of contact communication. Desperately feeling like I need to put a hat on today though because the hair is is it's gone mad. Um, yeah, anyway, so spring is in the air. Um, we kind of have a bit of hope restored. Um, but still conscious that there are many, many steps, many phases, many changes uh, that we're going to go through as, as people as we approach Easter. So we're going to continue with our journey through Lent today. Um, our sermon today comes from Sudan, who is a uh, reader. At St Michael's, she's just opted for Rita um, Emeritas, which means that she can hang up her bootstraps in many ways. So we thank her uh, for her ministry. But but interestingly, she continues to do uh, the things that she's been able to do for the past year. Anyway, and, and part of our worshipping online, part of our worshipping on paper has enabled um, Sue's involvement much more, which has been brilliant, brilliant for myself and for Anne. Um, but also uh, just a real difference uh, in a preaching style for you as well. So I know many people are grateful to be able to receive the sermons uh, in a written form you to mull over what's been said. Um, so we do that with Suze today. Um, a moment of quiet as we begin. Father, wherever we are, whatever it is um, mind, whatever are our concerns for the coming week, we um, we offer those to you now. We ask that you would take take away those things that we are worried and fearful of, and that you would. In this moment, we place them of thoughts of you um, and hope for, for our future. In Jesus' name. Amen. Perfect timing. The dog came in during the prayer. So just for a moment. Let me shut that door. And you are staying where you are now, mate. Yes, you are. Come on. No day. So let's use these prayers that we've got together. Uh, we've got responses in our first one. Um, and the response, if you don't have the paper in front of you, is you love us, Lord. Um, and at the very last one, uh, and I'll put my finger up like that, it becomes we love you, Lord. So let's just use our opening responses together. Through the creation of the universe, you love us, Lord. Through guidance, call and commandment, you love us, Lord. Through the gift of your son, Jesus, you love us, Lord. Through our worship and our response to your word, we love you, Lord. Um, I didn't write this next thing. Um, it comes from... Um, the Church of Scotland and and their um, their liturgy for the the weeks ahead. Um, 
but it's it's quite interesting that the person that wrote this because uh, we've got we've got quite an emphasis on rules today um and the person that wrote this uh felt quite strange about that when preparing to write this it felt strange thanking god for giving us rules with everything context is so important so when i started to think of all that god has given us the rules were but a stitch in a loving tapestry of gifts that we have received. And so let's let's give thanks on this day. So loving God, we thank we take time out of our busy lives to come before you this day to offer you our praise and our thanks. And we thank you this day and all the days of our lives. We thank you for the world in which we live and do not always fully appreciate or care for properly. We thank you for the ability to gather physically or digitally to praise you and learn from your word. We thank you that you love us so much, that you do not leave us to wander this world aimlessly and without boundaries. We thank you that you love us so much that you gave your people commandments in the name of love, spec. Commandments have stood the test of time and remained as valuable today as they did when given at Sinai. Lord, you love us so much that you sent your son, Jesus, to teach us how to live and how to love. Not only that, you demonstrated that love through the death and the resurrection of your only son. Thank you, Lord. I think when we think about laws and rules and we see what Jesus is up to in the temple, um, we, we're caused to consider um, our perceptions and how we see things as well. Uh, so one of the images that we've got is that kind of one that's been going around Facebook, with the cat climbing up the stairs or walking down the stairs, uh, whichever way you see it. Let's use our confession to God today. Because the way we perceive things, the way we think of things, that comes uh, definitely that, that impacts on how we behave, how we interact with the world around us. So if you've got this in front of you, um, we say all of these words together. Um, good and gracious God. There are times when we choose not to follow the rules. There are times when we stray off course. There are times when we choose the path of sin. In a time of quiet, we bring before you those times when we have failed to keep your commandments, when we have decided that we know better. Then use the words from today's song. The psalmist writes, Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Forgiven, loved and free. We enter this time of worship with gratitude. Open our ears to hear and our mouths to speak truth and justice. And our hearts to love and care for all your people. So be it. Amen. We remember today that that message of cross is the power of God's salvation. Through faults hide, though faults hide within us through Christ. Through Christ crucified, God forgives us and frees us from blame and from sin. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace. Uh, we had uh, Amazing Grace last year, last week from Pentatonix, so a different version, and now we've got a much more traditional 
version by El Devo, El Devo this week. Um, just for a moment, I want you to think as well. Uh, what are the things that you cherish? Uh, what are the things that define who you are? What are the things that you have lying around, which are maybe some particular brand or some logo, something you hold uh, hold quite dear to, quite strong to? Um, I, I had a complete flip, didn't I, during uh, lockdowns in my... I would have said I was I was firmly an Apple user um, for the last 20 years, probably, um, uh, using Apple, using Mac, and I and I went over to Windows in the uh, in the last lockdown. Some people are like, "Yay!" and some people are completely horrified uh, by me saying that. Um, some of us might have brands of of clothing that actually we really like. That, that we know we feel ourselves in. And that can be anything from kind of like your sports brands uh, and saying, oh, yeah, I'm a Nike over a, Nike over a Reebok kind of a person. Um, or it can be your fashion brands and your super dry. But actually, for, for different people, it can also be, you know what? No, I like going and buying my, my jumpers in, in Marks and Spencers. They are the ones that fit me best and they're the ones that say, a little bit about me so we we can all be beholden to branding it's not just uh younger people um who are stuck with this so um just think for a moment about why you choose the brand you choose why you head towards the logos that you choose uh, and what do the choices mean to you what do they say about us And then we've got that cat going up and down the stairs as well uh, as one of our pictures today. Um, you can look online and you can find a whole load of optical illusions from the faces and the chalice to the rabbit, the duck. Um, I put the stairs up because uh, I thought it was quite contemporary for a number of people that are using Facebook and that that will be a number of people watching today. But um I also, I, I steer right clear of some of those optical illusions where the screen starts moving because of, you know, the way the black and the white is and things like that, because I've got eyes that operate completely independently of one another, uh, even still as an older person. And, um, yeah, I was that kid with the eye patch. Um, and as a result of that, those just cause me huge consternation. And, and if I put those up and I knew that you were somebody who it does the same sort of thing for. Uh, I know that you might well have switched off immediately, but our optical think about not just those brandings, but the way that we see uh, things, how things are maybe more than that thing that we thought they were, they're more uh, than the thing that meets the eye. Um, and we're going to see that within our, our readings today as well. Um, yeah, I'll get to that bit when I get to it. So what are people's perceptions of God? What are people's perceptions of Jesus? And did he change those when he turned the tables? Gentle, meek, mild, insipid. What kind of saviour is that? Wishy-washy or ineffective? Not somebody we'd expect. Respect. So why is it so shocking to the, discover that Jesus is a man of passion, seized with righteous anger, wielding a whip, driving out those who drive out others and make God's house exclusive? Why should we be surprised that Jesus doesn't just speak out but takes action that ensures that all people everywhere have access to the love of God and that following this feisty man means that we must too be people of action. So let's start with some rules. Exodus 20, 
verses 1 to 17. It's one of those, are you sitting comfortably? Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bear down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents, the third and fourth generation, and those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of your Lord, the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labour and do all your work, but on the seventh day, the day that it's a Sabbath, to the Lord your God, you shall not do any work. You, your son, your daughter, your male, your female slave, your livestock, the alien residing in your towns. For the sixth day, the Lord made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them, that he rested on the seventh. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honour your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land of the Lord your God is giving to you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's house, you shall not covet your neighbour's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbour. This is the word of the Lord. I was really struck by that thing that I think I put in a sermon a few weeks ago um, that, that somebody had been considering what it was to take the name of God in vain and um, was saying, well, is it is it to say, oh, my God, is it to, to blaspheme in that way? Is it to use the name of God as a swear word? And actually, maybe, yeah, but it's so much more than that. To take the name of your God in vain is to say that something is true in the name of God to give it a set of regulations and, and, and to bind people by it when it's not actually something that God has said at all. Um, and I was really, really, really struck by actually how, how we use words, how we use uh, our understanding of God is, is paramount. Um, you know, do we release and free God, free people in the name of God, or do we use it to hem them in and to tell them that they're not, they're not worthy or whatever anyway but that's that little whatever in the middle of it let's have our reading from 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1 18 to 25 Christ the power and wisdom of God for the message about about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing but to those of us who are being saved it's the power of God for it is written I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Next piece of music was uh, one that I hadn't heard before, but it's called Act Justly, Love Mercy, Walk Humbly. So this is our gospel reading, John 2, 13 to 22.
Jesus cleanses the temple. The Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip out of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned the tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered all that was written. Seal for your house will consume me. And the, dis and the Jews said to them, what sign can you show us for doing this? And Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years. And will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. And after that, he after he was raised from the dead, the, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. So here's our, our sermon now from Sue. She's put this together for us uh, and she's used all three readings. So um, let's enjoy these words. Thankfully, you clearly know this is not me speaking. I hope, I hope, um, within the first lines. Um, when I was confirmed 66 years ago, if you haven't worked it out already, then I, I'm feeling a little bit like lockdown's done for me a bit more than it should have done. But anyway, 66 years ago, each candidate had to know and be able to repeat the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Catechism and the Ten Commandments. Faith teaching prior to confirmation has changed and very few people today come before the bishop knowing the Ten Commandments off by heart. At the core of the law, the Torah, the first five books of the Jewish Bible are the Ten Commandments, brought down from God at Mount Sinai by Moses. In the past, in many of our churches, those commandments were inscribed and placed on either side of the altar for the congregation to absorb alongside the Sunday worship and the teaching of Christian faith. There's an amazing description of Mount Sinai as Moses went up to meet with the Lord Almighty. Cloud covered the mountain for six days, hiding the glorious presence of God. To the Israelites surrounding the mountain foot and looking up at its summit, the glory of God is revealed in the devouring fire. Over 40 days, God shared with Moses all the laws that his children must follow. The first 11 verses of today's reading emphasise our relationship with God, the only living God. All others are false idols made of wood jewels and precious metals that can only stay upright with the aid of alcoves to stand in. One of the commandments that is now largely ignored is that keeping of the Sabbath day. When not under lockdown, how long ago that seems, for most people it appears more important to worship at the shopping centres than at God's altar. We must also honour our parents and not harm our neighbours in any way, these commandments are still the basis of our social responsibility and laws today. Not to murder, not to steal, not to commit perjury, not to covet your neighbour's spouse or property. God emphasises that we are his holy people and that we must obey him and never pray to shameful idols, of which there are so many today. Sportsmen, celebrities adored rather than our Heavenly Father. As the law is at the centre of the Jewish faith, so the cross is at the heart of Christianity. Paul writes of foolishness and wisdom and turns our perception of these two words on their heads. Crucifixion was seen as the final degradation of slaves, thieves, those guilty of treason and insurrection. How can it now be a sign of Christ's triumph over evil? Gods were all powerful, not powerless, as this Jesus showed himself to be by his death. 
However, the so-called wise men of the society have shown themselves to be fools because they cannot understand how God always chooses the blessed, the lowly, the merciful, the pure-hearted, and those and these are the men and women who spread God's word. God always searches out those who have no aspirations to greatness. Mary, Jesus, mother, young, unmarried virgin of no account in the world's eyes. John the Baptist, a voice crying in the wilderness. James and John, the sons of thunder, fishermen working for their father. Matthew, a tax collector. None of them were expected to make lightning strikes until Jesus called them into his service. And then they set the world alight. As it says later in this chapter, God chooses things, God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. We now turn to that vivid scene set in the temple in Jerusalem at the time of the Passover. Everywhere is noise and bustle, a little bit like in this office. Thanks, Ossie. Um, on the concourse at the entrance, there are spotless cattle and sheep in cages, pigeons and doves all ready to be sold for sacrifices. Ordinary money has been exchanged at a profit for temple coinage. The psalmist's words come to mind, passion for your house burns within me. Those who insult you are also insulting me. Pour out your fury on them. Consume them with your burning anger. Jesus, whip in hand, drives out those who are making a profit from the worship of God, as if it were a market day rather than a gathering of prayer and reflection. Consumed with righteous anger, he must have been a terrifying sight. Needless to say, there are always those present to question our Lord's right to stand up for God and fall back on the same mantra when confronting him and his authority. Show us a sign. And Jesus' enigmatic reply is far beyond their understanding. At that time, his triumph on the cross where his death and resurrection will bring about the redemption of the world. Heavenly Father, whose Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, sustain us now by your mighty power, illumined by your word and sacraments, so that we may be known and worshipped throughout all the world. Amen. One of the things that strangely, I don't know why, but you know how things don't strike you until they strike. And one of the things that really struck me about that reading was the fact that every table that was overturned, and this is maybe because it's obvious, but everything that was driven out of the temple, every table overturned was there um, because of the law um, and it was there because it was to bind people to um, it was to make money but it was to bind people um, to that religious establishment it was to bind people to those regulations um, and there are so many moments on there where where God's table, where Jesus is present at table and that table is sustaining and fulfill, fulfilling, whether it's him telling a story, um, whether it whether it's uh, the the going to eat with Zacchaeus, whether it's um, having his feet washed by Mary, whether it's um, the telling of the the who who has the greatest place, the the first will be last, the last will be all of that sort of stuff. There's so much stuff that Jesus does at table, uh, which brings life and which frees people, um, and which puts the law into perspective in its right place because it's important to have those those rules and regulations. But it's in this reading where where um, 
where Jesus absolutely turns and breaks those things that are focused on sacrifice and then obviously speaks of his own sacrifice. I don't know. It, the, there's a song at the very end of our service, Crowded Table, um, so please do go to it um, by the High Women. Um, and I think that kind of says it all for me. Let's just pray. Quite a long time of prayer today, so kind of sit back and uh, oh, absolutely, obviously, please stare it there, love. Sorry. Let's just sit back. I forgot to light my candles, so I'm doing it now. Prayers of adoration and confession we bring to you, Lord God of all. We gather here as church family, as a worshipping community, to honour and to praise you. We gather together young and old, stalwarts and inquirers, convic convinced and curious. God of love when we think how hard it is for us to get along in our own communities alone, in our own places alone. We lament those times when we have been caught up in times of friction or discord within the community in which we worship, the communities in which we work and the community in which we live. Forgive us, God, we pray. Today, as we reflect on ways in which you command your people to live alongside one another, may we be reminded of what it means to be part of church, this church, our community, our world. May we journey into this time of worshipping, forgiven and loved and free. Amen. Honour your parents. Don't kill, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't bear false witness. That should be easy, no. These acts are committed all over your world, our world. Although it may not be on our doorsteps, people are being mindlessly killed across this globe as a result of unnecessary conflicts, of corporate greed, of evil regimes. people thinking that they are right over someone else. And these people are part of our community too, for we all belong to you, Lord God. We pray for those who are mourning loss this day, swift loss, unexpected loss, and loss at the hands of another. Pray particularly for that family in Wales, uh, the 16-year-old girl who was murdered this week at a family gathering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Although it might not be hitting our bank balance, people are being robbed in every corner of this planet. 
land and livelihood snatched by corrupt governments, crippling interest rates from payday loans and credit cards, causing vulnerable people to lose their homes and their possessions. Despite some seeing this as the only way to put food on the table or heat or light in their home. And they're part of our community too. And we know that there are people in our communities in those situations. We pray for all who are caught in the spiral of debt. We know the increased pressure and pain that many are under as a result of this past year, of lockdowns, of furloughs, for those who have lost work, for those who had their own businesses but didn't fall into the criteria for government schemes. Lord, may we be wise to the needs of those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, open our eyes to these situations. We ask that you would inspire and guide us to play our part in bringing about change. Standing against injustice, speaking up and stepping up. Help us to find ways of not just commenting or sharing on Facebook, but actually help us to come up with ways of speaking up where we see injustices within our own communities, within our own country. So that because of those things we say and we do, there might be those who are inspired and to guide to make a difference. including those people in power. We pray that you would inspire and guide them to make a difference, to act and to intervene, to save lives, to rebuild, to restore. Our homes, your world, your kingdom. Hear us, we pray. Amen. Um, kind of a final song on our sheets is a new commandment Um, and we ask that you know we might be people who live in the light of that new commandment Um, but who live uh, knowing the rules are there for a reason but realising that God grace and love And that is what we are saved by. Going to move on to coffee in a moment. Um, But before we do that, uh, if you want the Zoom code, give me a shout. Otherwise, uh, see you at coffee. Um, The codes at the bottom of our sheet are correct. And those are the same codes that um, that got sent around the other day as well. So we pray our closing prayer. 
Oh, no. no well, notices. Um, church is open uh, as it is. There will be um, something uh, outside of church that will begin with, with um, there will be some uh, something happening for Mothering Sunday, um, poses, etc. that will be available for people within our community to collect. Um, but also, and that is next week, um, we're also thinking of some things that we can do as we approach Easter uh, that make that message uh, of God's love and salvation for us all uh, much more visible within our community, but also so that we might find ways ourselves um, to to uh, worship and to bring in that season. Um, so watch this space. Um, let's just go uh, with a blessing. So trusting that we are cared for and not controlled, loved and not law shackled, blessed and not bound. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Um, may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you, those who love you and those who you struggle to love now and forever. Amen. So we go now with God's foolishness and weakness as our only wisdom and strength, proclaiming Christ crucified and seek riches only in the love of God's word and in the zeal of God's house. And may God's just demands be your nourishment and delight. May Christ be the power and the wisdom of God to you. And may the Holy Spirit keep you thought, thought keep you in thought and word in God's good grace. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. So let's go in peace um, to grab our coffee or our tea, uh, uh, whatever uh, way we take it. Okay. Many blessings. See you soon. Amen.